Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel Swami Vijay and this is Swami Vijay speaking to all. In this video, I am going to start the first prose lesson from your Hornbill textbook. But before I start the lesson from your Hornbill textbook, let me ask you one simple question. Whom do you like most? Whether you like your parents most or you like your grandparents most? If you like your grandparents most, then why do you like your grandparents most? If you know the answer, comment in the comment section below. Let me also know that why you love your grandparents more than your parents. It is very natural that you may love your grandmother and grandfather more than your parents because your grandparents pamper you a lot and your parents try to control you and your grandparents always come to your support when your father and mother are scolding you. So that is the reason maybe you love your grandparents more than your parents. If you have grandparents, you are very fortunate because your grandparents are the best friends with you. Sometimes your grandparents behave very childish with you also. Now why I asked you the question is, the name of the lesson which I am going to start in this video is The Portrait of a Lady written by Kushwan Singh. But let me tell you one thing, the grandmother in this lesson is not the grandmother of Kushwan Singh. The videos which are available on YouTube, in many of the videos, the presenter or the teacher said that the grandmother in the story is the grandmother of Kushwan Singh, but that is not correct. The grandmother in the story is not the grandmother of Kushwan Singh and the narrator in the story is not Kushwan Singh. Kushwan Singh is the writer of this story, but he is not the narrator of the story. So Kushwan Singh is the writer only, but the narrator of the story is an unidentified narrator. Nobody knows who is that narrator, the name of the narrator is not given. So this is the first clarification you all have to have in your mind. The narrator of the story is not the writer of the story. Now without any delay, let me give you the summary of the lesson, The Portrait of a Lady, written by Kushwan Singh. At the beginning of the story, my grandmother, like everybody's grandmother, was an old woman. She had been old and wrinkled for 20 years that I had known her. People said that she had once been young and pretty and had even had a husband, but that was hard to believe. So the narrator, who is unidentified narrator, says that, describes about the physical features of his grandmother. The narrator always found her grandmother very old since his birth, so he couldn't imagine that his grandmother was once beautiful and pretty and she had a husband in her past. My grandfather's portrait hung above the mantelpiece in the drawing room. He wore a big turban and loose fitting clothes. His long white beard covered the best part of his chest and he looked at least 100 years old. So even the narrator describes his grandfather. So a narrator further talks about his grandmother. She hobbled about the house in spotless white with one hand resting on her waist to balance her stoop and the other telling the beads of her rosary. Her silver locks were scattered untidily over her pale, puckered face and her lips constantly moved in inaudible prayers. That means here you can see the grandmother used to wear always white clothes or white color clothes and she always used to tell the beads of rosary. That means she always used to recite some prayer and that is inaudible to others. In the initial years of his life, the author lived with his grandmother in the village, sharing a good friendship. His grandmother used to wake him up in the morning and get him ready for the school. She would hand over to him the things he required in the school. After having thick stale chapatis with butter and sugar for breakfast, they used to leave for school. The author's grandmother always accompanied him to school as it was attached to the temple. It was her habit to carry several stale chapatis for the village dogs, which they used to feed while returning from the school. The grandmother used to sit inside the temple reading holy books while the narrator learned alphabet and pray in the school. That means every day during narrator's childhood, grandmother accompanied narrator to his school. When narrator was learning alphabet, grandmother used to visit the temple and she used to pray to God. And while returning from the school, grandmother used to feed the stray dogs with the stale chapatis. In initial days when narrator was living with his grandmother in the village, when his parents left him with his grandmother and went to the nearby city, narrator and grandmother became very good friends. So this is the initial years of grandmother and the narrator in the story. Next comes the turning point in the story when narrator's parents call narrator and his grandmother to come to town and to settle down in the 
town. The turning point of their friendship came when they moved to the city to stay with the author's parents. Though they shared the same room, his grandmother no longer accompanied him to the school since the author started going in by bus. As years rolled by, they saw less of each other. Meanwhile, as there was no dogs in the streets, she took to feeding the sparrows. When narrator and his grandmother moved from village to town, he used to go to an English convent school and narrator's mother was not allowed to accompany narrator to his school and he was going to English medium school. In school, he was taught about Archimedes' principle, the law of gravity, but in school, they never taught anything about God and scriptures. When grandmother came to know about these things, grandmother disliked the education being provided to his grandson, but she was helpless and as there were no stray dogs, she started feeding the sparrows and the sparrows used to visit grandmothers every day they sit on the balcony and grandmother used to feed these sparrows with crumbs of bait unlike the village school the author was not taught about God and the scriptures which troubled his grandmother she did not believe in what was being taught at his school and was unhappy as she could not help him with his lessons Moreover, she was disturbed at the idea of music lessons being given at school as she considered music to be unsuitable for gentle folk. Her disapproval was conspicuous in her silence. Grandmother was very upset when she came to know that music lessons were being taught to her grandson because she believes that music has a livid association and it is meant for harlots. What is the meaning of the word harlot? You check the meaning in the dictionary and find out what is the real meaning of the word. Harlot. And when the author started going to university, he was given a room of his own. It resulted in a further gap between them. She accepted her loneliness and rarely spoke to anyone. All day long, she sat spinning the wheel and reciting her prayers. She relaxed for a short time only in the afternoon to feed the sparrows who came in large numbers. The bond and level of comfort they shared with her is evident in the fact that they perched even on her legs and head. She used to be at her happiest self while feeding the sparrows. So the gap between grandson and grandmother further increased when the narrator started going to university. He was provided a separate room and in the next stage, narrator decided to study further visiting a foreign land. The author decided to go abroad for further studies. He was sure that his grandmother would be upset at his departure. On the contrary, she came to the railway station to see him off but did not show any emotion. She was absorbed in her prayers telling the beads of her rosary, she silently kissed the author's forehead, which the author considered to be supposedly the last sign of their physical contact. When narrator decided to go abroad to study, he thought that his grandmother would be very upset. He believed that his grandmother wouldn't allow him to go to a foreign land to pursue higher studies. But to his surprise, his grandmother didn't say even a single word. She came and bid farewell to his grandson without speaking a single word. After five years, when narrator returned home, he saw his grandmother always busy in reciting prayers and telling the beads of rosary and feeding sparrows. On the same day in the evening, for the first time ever, she did not pray. She collected several ladies of the neighborhood and sang songs related to the homecoming of the warriors. She had been persuaded to stop singing in order to avoid overstraining. However, the next day she was fallen ill. As grandmother collected a dilapidated drum and started singing for continuously, she had fallen sick. And the next day, though grandmother was diagnosed with a mild fever by the doctor, grandmother knew that her end was near. She decided to spend the last few hours of her life reciting prayers and telling her beads. Soon, her lips stopped moving as she died. In this way, grandmother lost her breath peacefully. The family went to make arrangements for the grandmother's funeral. As they came with a stretcher, they stopped midway to find thousands of sparrows scattered around her dead body. The sparrows mourned the death of the grandmother in utter silence. They ignored the breadcrumbs thrown at them by the author's mother and flew away silently after the body was carried away for cremation. The breadcrumbs were swept away by the sweeper next morning. With this you can understand, during childhood, grandson and grandmother were close friends and when they moved to the city, their bond became weak and when narrator started going to university, they have different rooms and when narrator decided to go abroad to pursue higher education, he completely separated from his grandmother. Grandmother was very matured. She understood the way of life. She very well knew that she cannot 
keep her grandson always with her she wanted her grandson to grow in her life that is the reason why she allowed her grandson to pursue his dreams she never became an obstacle in the life of her grandson and she loved her grandson from the core of her heart and that is the reason why she allowed her grandson to pursue his dreams this is a summary of the lesson the portrait of a lady written by kushwan singh but let me repeat once again Kushwan Singh is not the narrator of the story and the narrator is not the writer of the story but whoever reads this story everybody feels that the narrator is the Kushwan Singh but it is not that it is Kushwan Singh's wonderful writing skills which makes us to feel that believe that the narrator is the Kushwan Singh so that is the greatness of the writer Kushwan Singh to make all of us to feel that the narrator is Kushwan Singh and it is his autobiography and the grandmother is his grandmother so you can understand the excellent writing skills of kushwan singh now what you all have to do is read the entire text loud once practice loud reading and practice silent reading once and after that come to understand in the text read the questions given under understand in the text and find the answers in the text after that come to talking about the text read the questions given under talking about the text and find the answers in the text and and try to answer the questions given under thinking about the language in this way you have to complete the lesson the portrait of a lady written by kushwan singh in future i am going to publish videos on each and every poem and lesson from your hornbill textbook and for short stories from snapshot so if you are not yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel and press the bell notification so that you can receive latest updates and information the moment i upload videos on youtube So thanks for watching this video and always remember stay home stay safe and stay strong take care